All right, we're making progress. J.L. Mackey is next from his The Miracle of Theism, Arguments for and Against the Existence of God. And this was a pretty heavy uh, uh, selection from J.L. Mackey, a philosopher who died, what, mid-80s, I guess. In it, it at least the first part of it, um, he is responding to a book that I nearly bought just a month ago from the local used bookstore here. A book by uh, Hans Kung, Does God Exist? Uh, I, I almost uh, bought that book. It was, it was very big, and I just thought to myself realistically, am I going to read this thing? Probably not, so I did not purchase it. But it, it appears that he's responding directly to that book, Does God Exist? Uh, Hans Kuhn, of course, uh, was a Christian and, of course, thought that God existed. So he's responding to that. And I, this, this is an interesting article because it contains several uh, uh, long quotes from the book by Hans Kuhn. And I shouldn't judge it, the entire book, just based on those quotes because it was a a very thick book. Uh, the man wrote huge books. And I shouldn't judge it just based on a few uh, quotes he would have here. But it seems to be that Kung wants um, all positions at the same time. He wants his cake. He wants to have his cake and he wants to eat it too. What do I mean by that? Well, listen to this quote from the book, Does God Exist? God is in this world, and this world is in God. There must be a uniform understanding of reality. God is not only a supreme finite, alongside finite things. He is, in fact, the infinite in the finite, transcendence and immanence, the absolute in the relative. It is precisely as the absolute that God can enter into a relationship with the world of man, God is therefore the absolute who includes and creates relativity, who, precisely as free, makes possible and actualizes relationship. God, as the absolute relative, here, hereafter, transcendent, imminent, all-embracing and all-permeating, most real reality in the heart of things, in man, in the history of mankind, in the world. Okay, let's just stop there. In general, on a cursory reading, we can say that Kung is, is describing the, the transcendent awe of God, the greatness of God, um, the, the, uh, infinite, the infinity of God. But let's take a quote, closer look here. What, what is he saying? God is the infinite in the finite, the transcendence in imminence, the absolute in relative. Now, if somebody can just break that down and explain what exactly that means, what does it mean to be the absolute in the relative, to be the infinite in the finite? It's very poetic. Um, it certainly lends itself to a mystical reading. But to ra use that as a rationalization for the question of whether God exists or not, to use that as a rational description of God, uh, frankly, that doesn't make any sense. Neither do a lot of arguments that I read from a lot of very sophisticated Christians or theologians. Take this, for example, where Kung is talking about internal contradictions. Um, I'm sorry, he's talking about whether God is personal or non-personal. Is he finite or infinite? And I put a note here, internal contradictions. That's why I said that. But at any rate, listen to this quote. God is not a person as a man is a person. The all-embracing and all-penetrating is never an object that man can view from a distance in order to make statements about it. The primal ground, primal support, and primal goal of all reality is not an individual person among other persons. 
is not a superman or superego. And then later on in the same book, he says, A God who founds personality cannot himself be non-personal. God is not neuter, not an it, but a God of men. He is spirit in creative freedom, the primordial identity of justice and love, one who faces me as founding and embracing an interhuman personality. It will be better to call the most real reality not personal or impersonal, but transpersonal or suprapersonal. What? You know, this is an internal contradiction. Um, Kung is saying that God transcends everything, but he also says that he is not outside all that is. In other words, he wants to have his cake and he wants to eat it too. He wants to have all things uh, and not others. How can God be personal yet be infinite? How can God be non-personal um, and personal at the same time? How can, how can something be infinite, that is, have no limits, and yet have a personality, where personality is defined by the limits that one has? Uh, you are... Uh, when you have a personality, it means you are some things and not others. How can this how can this be if you are infinite? Um, yet Kung argues you can be personal and infinite at the same time. I truly don't understand it, but he rationalizes it by using words that, like um, God is transpersonal or suprapersonal. Please. Uh, if anybody can make sense of arguments like this, of, of just kind of making up words and have it as a rational argument um, and make it simple for people like me, I would appreciate it. Again, I understand this as a form of poetry, as a form of Christian mysticism, a, a paradox that needs to be contemplated, but to present it as a rational argument and then just kind of you know, make up new words to defy to define what God is to justify your position. Um, I don't know. It's kind of cheating if you ask me. Well, there's quite a bit more to Mackey's article than that. Uh, it goes on at some length. Um, it it goes on to discuss the moral consequences of atheism. Why are so many Christians afraid of atheism? Well, in a lot of respects, it's because they're afraid of what they perceive as the moral bankruptcy that is inherent in atheism. If God is the author of morality, when God is denied, morality must therefore disappear. And um, I'm afraid I don't agree with that. I share Mackey's view, and I'm going to quote from him directly here. Morality has a genuine causal source of its own. It is basically a matter of feelings and attitudes, partly instinctive, developed by biological evolution, and partly acquired, developed by social historical evolution, and passed on from generation to generation, less by deliberate education than by the automatic transmission of cultural traits. Since it has such a source, quite independent of religion, it is certain it is certain to survive when religion decays. As my religion has decayed, my morality uh, has survived and it has flourished. Morality is a function of your society around you, the people that influence you. Um, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Religion need not apply as far as I'm concerned. Your morality comes from your parents your your peers, your influences, that sort of thing. We don't need God to tell us what is right or what is wrong. And uh, that's just my opinion. I share Mackey's view. So there you go. Um, that's just my spouting off. And uh, I guess I'm almost out of time. The next 
What is next? Michael Shermer. Michael Shermer's next or uh, AJ Ayer. All right. Take care.